After 20 years, Democrats say they have an affordability plan. That's funny because they're the ones that made New Jersey unaffordable. It started with their first budget. This budget also proposes securitizing a portion of the state's expected future payments under the National Tobacco Settlement. Governor McGreevy drained the surplus and borrowed more than a billion dollars against what was supposed to be a $5.5 billion revenue stream. To this day, it's the largest gamble in state history, and it didn't pay off. A former Democrat lawmaker and McGreevy administration official later likened it to trading a new BMW for a Yugo. And New Jersey Democrats did it again and again. Their third budget included a 17% spending hike financed by borrowing another $2 billion, which the state Supreme Court said violated New Jersey's constitutional mandate for a balanced budget. Overall, Democrats borrowed more than $12 billion during McGreevy's term, bringing the state's total debt load to $28.4 billion more than $3,200 for every man, woman, and child in the state. And Wall Street lowered the state's credit rating three times. And then there were the tax hikes. In all, McGreevy raised taxes and fees by more than $8 billion, increasing taxes on cigarettes, tires, home sales, cell phones, casinos, hotels, even plastic surgery. But those were relatively minor compared to his hikes on corporate business and income. Republicans demanded spending cuts instead, killing at least $200 million of the tax hikes, and won. The proposed $116 million tax on phones was scuttled, $72 million was cut from a home sales tax increase, and $12 million was chopped off the billboard tax hike. Meanwhile, newspapers blasted Democrats for spending like drunken sailors. While inflation ran at or below 3% for the better part of a decade, McGreevy's final budget accelerated spending by 16.7%. Governor Phil Murphy nearly beat it, but it's still the largest ever. More on that later. My resignation will be effective on November 15th of this year. Even after McGreevy resigned, leaving Senate President Dick Cody in charge, New Jersey's Democrats kept up the charade, taxing and borrowing millions more. By the time Governor John Corzine arrived, debt and pension liabilities hit more than $100 billion. New Jersey was bankrupt, and things were about to get worse. We begin with New Jersey in crisis. With a sign on the door of state government says close. It all comes down to a bitter dispute over an increase in sales tax. It was the first government shutdown in New Jersey's 219 year history. 45,000 workers were told to stay home. Casinos went dark. Judges' gavels didn't bang. State parks closed their gates to visitors, and drivers couldn't renew their licenses. But we do owe the people of this state an apology. We have disrupted their lives. We have caused hardship. Corzine promised the hike would fund the Homestead property tax rebates forever. We'll stick to it. I'll pledge it. We'll make it happen. Democrats promptly took half the money to buy votes for themselves. And Corzine revoked the rebate checks four years later, despite promising to increase them by 40%. Meanwhile, property taxes soared by nearly 70%. They dug themselves into so much debt, Corzine tried to lease the Garden State Parkway and New Jersey Turnpike to keep up with payments. That plan would have raised tolls 800%. Republicans stood up to him and helped defeat it. So Democrats increased income taxes instead. Then the recession hit and state revenues tumbled. During the eight following years, Republicans were able to hold the line on spending and tax increases thanks to the help of Governor Chris Christie. But that didn't stop Democrats from trying. They passed 10 tax hikes that Christie vetoed. When Governor Murphy was elected, Democrats rolled up their sleeves and started taxing everything under the sun. They raised over 60 taxes and fees, ranging from health care to utilities and everything in between. Now state taxes are 14.5 billion higher than they were five years ago. If tax rate is your issue, we're probably not your state. And despite taxpayers paying more than ever, spending still exceeds revenue by $280 million. All that new spending isn't lowering property taxes. Property taxes continue to go up and are set to increase more this year than they have in a decade. They even cut aid to a third of school districts driving those costs. Under Murphy, Democrats have made living in New Jersey $17,500 more expensive. Now a family earning enough to be upper middle class in America qualifies for Section 8 housing in New Jersey. They don't have a plan to change that. Our plan rolls back inflationary costs levied on income taxpayers who are paying more than ever we would adjust the income tax brackets for inflation, just as 37 other states do. We'd eliminate the marriage penalty built into the tax code and increase the renter's deduction to 30%. That alone would save the average tenant over $2,000.
And to jumpstart business and investment, we gradually lower the corporate business tax from 11.5% to 2.5% to match North Carolina's lowest in the nation rate. We also need to fully fund schools and ensure that school funding leads to lower taxes. We are working on a plan that would do just that. In total, Democrats raised taxes 189 times since taking control of the legislature 20 years ago. And spending has more than doubled. It is tragic that they promised relief to the working poor and middle class, then turn around and make New Jersey even less affordable place to live. If we ignore their history, they will be sure to repeat it.